Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at generic models. You might call them generic models, but they're technically known as model in place. So they're all considered components, but model in place, generic models, whatever you want to call it. That's what we're covering in this video. Before we get into it, if you happen to learn something throughout the course of the video, please demolish that like button. It tells me that you did learn something and then you might have liked it too. Also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That helps as well. All right. Get into it now. I'm just in a generic project, nothing special to look at here, but we are going to look at generic models or model in place. So when you come up here in the architecture tab to component, you can place a component. And if you do this, this will just show you all the different families that you have loaded into your project. And that might be there already by default. In this case, anything you want in their project can be placed this way through components. You can also find all the families that are loaded into your project in the families tab here in the and then from there, you can just drag them all in easy enough. But I prefer going to component and place component because I'm more visual. So that is not generic models at all, but we'll see how this components tab plays into it here in a second. So model in place. And when I click model in place, you might have heard of this as generic model. I'm going to say generic model a lot here, but we're first prompted to choose a family category and parameters. All this is doing is going to organize the model you're about to create in your project into a particular Revit category. And that's good for a number of reasons, whether it's visibility or anything else, but primarily for visibility and how you want to control that element. So really you can choose anything you want. And I'll, I'll first start by telling you how I first learned this and why I don't necessarily agree with it. It's okay. It's fine. But in the end, it's not, exactly perfect. So I first learned how to create models in Revit through modeling in place through generic models. And what I was told to do is come in the family category and parameters in this selection, go to generic models and then hit OK. That's fine. We can do that. And we're going to do that, at least for this, this first model. But after that, you'll see why you may not want to do that. And so you from there, we can see family parameters and I personally have not seen where these are populated, where they come from, because I have had, I've been in project with project parameters, whether it's, I just don't know. So I, I'm not telling you not to worry about this section, but I haven't seen it be an issue. I haven't seen anything pop up in that section that tells me I need to either know what's in there, or I just haven't seen any family parameters pop up here. Regardless, generic models, I'm gonna hit okay. Well then prompted to rename it you know, call it something. And this is exactly where I would see lots of people get into trouble. And this is where I first realized where naming things in Revit was such a big deal because a lot of people, what they would do is they would go to model in place, go to generic model, hit okay. They'd come to this window and then they would again hit okay. And you'd have a list of generic models that are called generic model one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And it's just a mess. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't know what it's supposed to be or anything. So just name it. So I, I'm going to be generic for the sake of this video, and this is just going to be a box. And the fact they're all going to be boxes, so let's call it box one. So I'll hit OK. And th at this point, I'm not really going to go into how to, how to model a generic model because everything that we have access to as far as creating a generic model, a model in place element, is the exact same types of modeling components that I've gone through in previous videos. I went through each one of these specifically and showed you how to use them and how you might make them, particularly in a family. So that will all apply here in a second, but I'm not going to go over all of these in this video, but I'm just going to make a basic extrusion that is a box. And I'm going to place this here. It's going to be four feet high. It doesn't really matter for what I'm doing, but hit the green check mark and I can't see it for some reason. So maybe it's on another work plane. Yeah, it's on a different work plane. So let's go ahead and edit work plane and just place it on level one. That's all, that's where I want it to be. So there, there's my, my cube. I'll finish that and we can just see our cube. And it's at this point, it's, it's kind of like any other model that you're aware of and that you have access to within Revit because you can edit it. You can further edit from here. But the difference is, is that it's a model in place. And so the difference between a model in place element and any other type of element in Revit is that this model in place element was modeled within the project. This is very, it's project was specific and I'm not, I can't take this to another project unless I copy it to another project. 
and that applies similarly to families, but families are different in that they aren't modeled in the project itself. They are modeled within the family environment. So they, in a sense, they're, they are their own closed loop or they're built within their own environment and then loaded into the project. Okay, so I mean, that's the real basic version. Families are built outside the project and generic models are built within the project. So you might say, well, I, I have custom elements, I have this or that, and I want to make them all within my project because it's project specific and it just makes sense. To a degree, that would be correct. But to the degree it's not correct, it, it has everything to do with how generic models and how model in place elements impact the project. So if you've been on in any large projects and especially if they have a lot of model in place elements, it's likely to bog down the model. It just, it just is there. There are a number of things that can bog down models, but perhaps the biggest thing and <laughs> something that can have the most impact over the course of a project is the number of model in place elements. And that has everything to do with how they work. And we've gone through this. They are built within the project, which means they're not referenced from outside of the project. The whole point of having families is not so, yes, it's to have a family. It's to have a folder of a bunch of different types of furniture, whatever it might be that you can access for multiple projects. That's great. That's the whole, that's the main thing with families, but also it's to optimize projects. So you don't have everything built within one project. In a sense, you have things that you have loaded into the project from families reference to those families outside of the projects. So you're not technically bogging down your project. So if you're on any of my projects and you're in my models, you're likely going to hear from me if I have found that there's a ton of generic models because it will eventually slow the model down. It will eventually bring it to a crawl and cause problems for everyone. Now, I'm not saying there's no place for generic models and model in place elements. There are plenty of instances where you will need to use them. I may not want to use them. And I'm, I'm basically my first instinct is to create a family. Can I make this into a family? I'm going to make it in a family environment. I'm going to load it into the project and it's just going to be its own family in the project. And if I have to edit it, I go back into the family and that's it. Instead of just editing it right there in the project. A couple of instances of where I've needed to do a generic model, a model in place element in a project is if it's a, like a super specific canopy, just a, a big canopy that's not made up of specific modules. If you have modules, then yeah, you can make a family that is each like is one of the modules and you just have a bunch of them. That's fine. But if it's a super specific element, something like a canopy, for example, or a very specific light fixture that is not just one light fixture, but a bunch of things that come together, a large sculpture, maybe it makes sense that it's in the project. But if it's a single element, like a single sculpture or a single light fixture, or just a single module or something, I believe that should always be a family. So if you know how to model anything in Revit from a generic model or in place family, then or an in-place model, then you can create your own family version of it instead. And that's what I'd recommend. So anyways, that was a long rant on using generic models versus using a family model. And it just, it makes more sense in just about every case to use a family when you can. So really, I, we've kind of covered everything with generic models other than this is the generic model. I've got it here. I can further edit it because it's in my project. I can always go back to edit in place. I can select the element, change the material, do whatever I want. Just know that it's in your project and not external and not in a family. It's just in your project. Okay. But the thing here also is that we won't necessarily find this in our components. If I go to architecture and component and I just search box, I'm not going to find it there. And that's because it's not a family. It's not loaded in as a family. It doesn't populate in my components. It's technically separate. So that's, that's also something to be aware of. It is its own element in the project, not part of families at all. And you can't just throw it around. So here's something else that I, I see a lot of people do. And I, I, when I say that it's because I've done it too, before I knew necessarily what to do. So I can copy this around like I, like you would anything else. I can copy it however many times I want, but this is where things start to become an issue because I now have three different instances of 
one model in place element, which you might say, well, it's copied around. It's okay. Well, because of what it is and not a family, it's a model in place element. There's technically three versions of this box and it's not just one version three times. It's three, three. And you can see how this can start to cause a problem in your project whenever you have a ton of them. So there, there's a workaround and it's, it's honestly not the best workaround. It's still the same idea, but if you click on the element and you edit in place, if you copy them around in the generic model itself, then it becomes it's one instance. So they're all one. It's all one generic model. And this is, you know, all it is, is just, it's more area. It's more models. It's more this or that within one. And that's fine. So like if I were creating a whole canopy, I wouldn't make each little portion its own generic model. I definitely wouldn't do that. I would make the entire canopy one giant generic model and then move on. So like I have that one element, so it appears to look like it's a family, like it's one single element, but it just so happens that it's an in-place element, which is okay in the end. I just try to have as few as possible. I might have a giant building and have only a handful, like less than five generic models because everything else I've made a family. And it just makes sense because I'm likely to use that in multiple locations in the project. And I don't want to just simply build it in the project because a lot of times when these projects get large, you know, whether you have a lot of generic models or not, it's going to be slow. And that's just the way it is. There's not a lot you can do about that to a degree. So I don't necessarily want to edit all these different families and models and things that I have to do within the project environment. If it's a large project, I want to, go into an external family that's just that single model and then edit it, load it back in and have it update everywhere. This is all considered manual, I guess. If you want to look at something manual versus automatic, I don't have, I can't load this in anywhere. I can't, it's, it's not going to edit everywhere else. I have to edit it all manually. Whereas if I take this couch and I change the way it looks, in the family environment, load it back in. It's going to change the way that couch looks everywhere in my project because that's how families work. So I hope that makes sense. Generic model versus family. The last thing we want to look at here is if we edit in place, and this is just going to help you organize your generic models if you end up using them, when you end up using hopefully one or two in your project only, is I can now, I don't have to keep these as generic models. It wouldn't make sense for me to keep them as generic models. Maybe it is. Maybe there's just this weird element that's sitting off to the side that you don't you don't know what category it might fall into. But if it's a canopy, you know, maybe it's it's probably a roof. You know, you can probably start to play some of these elements into a category that makes sense. And I say that because all the visibility graphics settings you have throughout your entire project are based on those categories and you want that generic model, whether it's a canopy, whatever it is, to align to something. So it now inherits some of these visibility graphic controls you have set up throughout the project. So imagine this is maybe furniture or something or anything more than just a generic box. We can then in the actual generic model, you can see I can edit these. I can come up here to family category and parameters. And this is the exact same thing we were looking at. Now we can actually start to see my family parameters because I have set a family and that's really, I've set a category. That's really the idea here. So generic models, these are your parameters that you have within the project to work with. And that just makes sense. So you can choose any category. Again, we can, we're literally changing the category that this is now a part of. And so, like I said, this is probably furniture and we can see that all of our furniture parameters now show up here, which I don't have any that are specific. But if we look at all these different kinds, we can see they do have different parameters. That's where they start to show up down here. I've not seen these show up until you've chosen a family category, making a generic model. So we can always keep it a generic model, but I want to make this furniture. And really there's, there's not a whole lot else that we can do here because it, it just is what it is. Like I now have this generic model. It is a furniture category. And whenever I finish it, that's what it is. It is furniture. And the name is box one. That doesn't necessarily apply or doesn't, doesn't matter so much because it's, it is right there. It's one instance of it and that's it. But the main thing we want to be aware of is that furniture is there and it is furniture. And so that means whenever I go into my visibility graphics and I come down to furniture, if I now turn furniture off, 
now my boxes go away with other pieces of furniture. That just makes sense. And, you know, beforehand, this was a part of the generic model category. And if I hit the generic model category, they would hide as well. So it will work. It's just one less thing you have to worry about because I'm, I'm trying to not have generic model elements in my project because I'm not really thinking about them. I'm not trying to account for the fact that a piece of furniture might be a generic model, so I better hide or show these generic models. Anyways, like that that's really going to do it for generic models. Um, if you need to know more about modeling in place and specifically how to model, I have videos on that because there's a diff bunch of different ways that you can model in Revit, and I do cover those in other videos. So if you did happen to learn something, demolish that like button. helps me out. Also, consider changing the face of that subscribe button to existing. Let me know if you have any questions. I will answer those down in the comments, of course. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.